Hi, my name is Sabrina Gayor and I'm a Persian and Middle Eastern chef and today I will be making a really lovely one pot wonder, a Middle Eastern tagine taking its influence from North Africa, wonderful butternut squash, chickpea and harissa, the perfect dish for winter. The ingredients we're going to use in today's dish are a beautiful selection of spices and store cupboard staples, going to make the perfect winter warmer dish. We have here onions, butternut squash, chopped tomatoes from a tin, chickpeas, dried apricots, lovely preserved lemons, some fresh parsley. We have this lovely special North African condiment, it's harissa, it's a selection of different chilies that are pummeled into a paste and make a really beautiful addition to lots of different dishes, whether cooked or uncooked, it's really versatile and absolutely delicious. Quite fiery, so use in moderation, but here we're going to balance it really nicely with a little bit of honey that will just give it the perfect complement so it just it doesn't burn you too much. And then here, lovely ground cumin, really earthy and flavoursome. We've got some ground coriander, really beautiful depth. Got quite a bit of cinnamon, a little bit more than maybe most people are used to, but North African cooking is really, really bold, and you'd be surprised at what a humble butternut squash can stand up to. Got some turmeric, which is fantastic, aids digestion and gives a wonderful depth and flavour to dishes, meat and vegetables alike. And then lastly, we've got little cumin seeds here, which are just great to give a slightly different flavour to the ground cumin and kind of infuse that oil right at the beginning. Great ingredients to start a great dish. Right, we're ready. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a nice heavy based pan and we're going to put that straight onto the boiling plate of the agar, okay? It's going to be nice and hot and it will help you get the dish started, give it a kick start, make it a quick process, okay? So first up we've got chopped diced onions. You really don't need to be particularly fussy with this. Any size, no perfection, it's absolutely fine. This is one pot cooking, Eastern North African style. You don't have to worry about precision. Now what I like to do is before the oil goes in, I like to just stir the onions a little bit. It kind of cooks them through just that little bit first before you add the oil. Okay, now we're gonna be generous with the oil. Any cooking oil, vegetable oil, sunflower oil, light olive oil, absolutely fine. Now, what we might do is add a little bit more oil later because as we add the spices, the spices are so dry that they will just go and suck up all the extra oil that's in the pan. So have your oil handy. Okay. Okay, now the first spice we're going to add is the cumin seeds. We're not going to add all the spices together. If you add the cumin seeds now, what happened? is they temper in the pan along with the onions and they kind of infuse the onions so you're starting your tagine or stew and really infusing flavour into it right from the very start, okay? So we've got a heaped tablespoon here of cumin seeds and they go straight in. Okay, I'm going to turn my hands to the other spices now. Right. Going to start with two heaped teaspoons of ground turmeric. Now you're gonna probably think that it sounds like a lot to have quite a large quantity of these spices, but that's how we cook in the East. We're very abundant with spices, and as long as you complement them with the right ingredients, it gives a beautiful overall flavor at the end. Okay, in with the turmeric. Next we have here one heaped teaspoon of cinnamon. Not just for apple pies, you know. We have two heaped teaspoons of cumin. We're going to put that in. And then two heaped teaspoons of ground coriander. Okay, lovely. At this point, you want to stir it. You just want to make sure that as you're stirring, you can see that there's still a little bit of oil left in the pan, so it's not so bad. 
as you add your spices, you just want to make sure that they're not going to absorb absolutely all the oil in the pan because then you don't have any oil for your other ingredients. At the moment, I have just enough oil, but if I'm going to add other ingredients into it, like the butternut squash, I may add just a little bit more. Just do it by eye. You, you know, follow your instincts. You can't, really cannot go wrong with recipes like this. This is home cooking, and you know, that's why it's popular. In, in countries like sort of Morocco, Tunisia, those dishes are easy, they don't have precision and everybody has their own versions. You can put in whatever's in your spice cupboard, you don't have to stick to a recipe. It's about using what you have and, and cooking good wholesome food on a regular basis. That, that will feed everyone, okay? Right, you're just gonna fry the onions off in those spices and they will help give flavor to everything else that you put into this dish, okay? So next up, next up we're gonna put in butternut squash. Now, what I like to do is I like to dice, I like to dice them into about one, one and a half inch cubes. Small, basically, is what you want. Not too small that it will completely disintegrate into the dish. So in with the butternut, lovely. And then you use that onion and spice mixture to really coat the butternut then everything has an even flavour. And the butternut takes on all the characters and smells of a souk. Okay, now I'm just gonna check that there is enough oil in here. And I think, to be honest, a little bit of oil would help it right now. Prevents the butternut from sticking as well. Probably put in about one to two tablespoons more oil. Just use, play it by eye. You don't want a really greasy stew either. Just enough so that you can stir and swell the button up without it catching at the bottom of the pan. Okay. Now, next, we're going to add harissa. Now, harissa is a fantastic ingredient. It's very, very common in North Africa, and I think so many different recipes that it can be used for. Um, it's actually sold here at Divertimenti, which is fantastic because it makes it easier to find ingredients that perhaps we're not familiar with, but it's really a real gem of an ingredient, okay? Um, it's basically a pulp of chilies, different chilies mixed to a paste, and it's a store covered ingredient, and it can really add a lot of magic to so many different recipes. So we're going to put in about two tablespoons. It's spicy, so use at your discretion. Right, that's in. I'm going to give that a big stir. Now, as a welcome balance to the harissa, we're going to add honey. The great thing about um, countering chilies, I would say chilies love a bit of sweet. It really helps to, to balance in your palate and, and dissipate some of the heat. Um, great complement with sugar or honey. I prefer to use honey, and I would say that honey is more commonly used in the East. Okay, so in with three tablespoons of honey. Now please remember that not only does the butternut squash have sugars in it, but obviously adding the honey could mean that you could catch this at the bottom of the pan. So stir really quickly, get all those ingredients well mixed, lovely. Okay, next up we're gonna put our chopped tomatoes. Now the chopped tomatoes from a tin will make a wonderful base for this. And normally I'd recommend that you put a pinch of sugar wherever you use chopped tomatoes from a tin, but you really don't need to because there's honey in this recipe and then added wonderful sweetness from the apricots. Okay, in with those. Lovely. Give that all a stir. And then we're going to use a can of chickpeas and we're going to keep the juice of the chickpeas in there as well. Okay, in go the chickpeas. Right. This time we're going to season it well. Now be generous, okay? I like a generous tablespoon of salt. Salt flakes, so not a generous tablespoon of table salt because that will just ruin your dish. Okay, little bit of pepper. Don't really need too much. 
That is looking pretty fantastic. Can't tell you the smell. So lastly, we're gonna add in our dried apricots and the cooking time will just give it enough to take on that lovely sauce and kind of plump up and become nice, juicy and soft. Okay, give that a stir. A couple of generous handfuls of apricots is the perfect quantity for this dish. Now, we're just gonna get the lid on. Okay, now I'm going to transfer this into the baking oven. Okay, lift it carefully, otherwise you'll lose your lunch. <laughs> okay, there we go, lovely. Now I've just put that in the oven for 30 minutes and the butternut squash will be cooked perfectly and the spices will be cooked through. We'll then just take it out, return it to the boiling plate when we'll finish it off with a little bit of fresh chopped parsley as well as some preserved lemons, both sliced and halved, and it will be ready to eat. So 30 minutes cooking time has passed now and we're going to go and check on our tagine and it should be ready. Just gonna pop that on top, shut the door. Beautiful. Now, let's see. That does look really good. And even better than look, it smells amazing. Okay, I'm just gonna give that a stir. Beautiful, hasn't stuck to the bottom of the pan. Butternut squash looks like it's cooked perfectly. And don't worry if you run a little bit over keeping it in the oven, you'll be absolutely fine. Now I'm just gonna quickly transfer that onto the boiling plate just so we can finish it off. Okay, lovely. Okay, so we have these ingredients. Now these, if you don't know what they are, preserved lemons, very typical uh, North African and Arab cuisine. It's literally lemons preserved with salt and water and it's just a great way to keep them and obviously have ingredients and, and, and store them in the cupboards and use them. But these are really quite special because they're about the size of a golf ball. But they also add a wonderful citrusy flavour to finish off the spiciness of this dish. And you will notice that as soon as you put it onto the plate, it is going to start bubbling quite viciously. That's okay, that's what you want. Okay. So, I've got some in slices that I'm just going to add in. I've got about eight preserved lemons. Put as much or as little as you want. And then I'm going to take these ones and just halve them before adding them over to the stew. Okay, now I've got these lovely preserved lemons. I'm just going to slice some of them. A few more of those. Now be careful because it, even though they're this small, they seem to have more seeds than any lemon um, you'll find. And you can find this... You can find this ingredient anywhere. So the seeds removed, and then I just think it's nice to halve some. So you have like, some will be a slice and it'll give you a nice citric bite and, and some will be in halves. It's more of an ingredient in itself. Okay, and then lastly, I've got a little bit of parsley, fresh parsley, pointless adding it any sooner, but it just gives just that lovely kind of herby bite right at the end and obviously makes the dish very, very pretty. Okay, so we're just gonna roughly chop. Don't worry too much about stalks, but if you've got big stalks like this, discard these, okay? Or use them as a lovely stock or something like that. Okay, roughly chop. I find that holding this part of the knife is a great way to steady yourself when you're chopping and using a big knife. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these lemons, pop them in the pot with most of this parsley. You just want to reserve just a handful of parsley and also a few sliced lemons to garnish the finished dish, okay? So, in we go, lemons. And then just a good amount of the parsley straight over. Going to give it a quick stir. It's not about cooking it anymore, it's just about working the ingredients in and then removing them. There we go, getting ready to plate up. I'm telling you, that looks so good already. Okay, now I like pretty plates and I think that 
especially with one pot cooking, if you serve something in the right kind of vessel for it, I think a little bowl is a really nice idea for this particular kind of dish because you can either add it with couscous. Traditionally, um, you can eat it with bread. That is really one of the most common ways that tagines are eaten and they're always in amongst lots of different dishes. Okay. Oh, I wish smell of vision existed. Okay. I'm gonna be generous with this because that's real Eastern style. Pile them high. Absolutely lovely. And that sauce has gone rich and unctuous and, and that's what you want. It reduces, it's not a wet stew. It's, it's just bathing just enough sauce. There we go. Now, on with your lovely parsley. Just a little bit of garnish. There we go. Done. Butternut squash, chickpea, harissa tagine. Delicious, done in under an hour.